Okay, I cut, and I've, I'm back. I uh, cleaned up a lot of this. This was just a mess. So um, there was just uh, thermal compound everywhere. There kind of is a little bit still, um, but uh, it was just such a mess. I had to clean it all up. And I also trimmed these driver wires and retinned them. I'm just noticing a little bit of thermal compound between that resistor and that emitter. See, I'm, I'm working under my magnifying glass now. I just, I'm older. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. And um, trying to work, looking through a little tiny iPhone screen was was bad, was really bad. So I got, as you can see, I got my magnifying glass. I'm doing that now, much better. Okay, now, what we're gonna do here is, um, I am going to go ahead and do my first uh, two one, I'm uh, sorry, five one nine a slice, right? That's what we're gonna do here. Uh, I'm just prepping this for when I install the driver back in. I'm gonna actually take some of this solder off. There's way too much. Okay. Okay, and over here, just too much. Big old blob of solder, huh? There we go. That is better. It's much better. Okay. That's what happens when I work without seeing what I'm doing. Okay, so the way that I was explained that you should do one of these, and uh, hopefully you'll see it okay on camera here. I'm gonna try and try and get the best focus that I can. Okay, hopefully that's good focus. All right, now, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to make an incision straight down this way, and then again this way. So make like kind of a cross pattern, a plus pattern. So uh, you do that first, and apparently that's okay to do because, again, you're cutting down to glass, not phosphor. And then, once you've made that cross pattern, then in one of these crosses, you come at a 90 degree angle down and scrape over. And apparently they, it all just comes off. This is what Clements was telling me. So let's see, this is my first rodeo. Let's see what I can do. Okay, try and keep my fingers out of the way from the camera. You know what? This is, this uh, X-Acto knife blade is okay. But I'm going to get a brand new one. You know, I want this first time for me to do it to go well. So I'll get a really, really sharp brand new one. Okay, brand new blade. Okay. All right, here we go. By the way, I just put a little pressure on it. I can already see that the top of the dome is scratched, so uh, this is, these domes are soft, I can tell. So be careful with them. Oh yeah, they're very soft. They're, it kind of feels like, I heard a little, heard a little, a little pop just then. He said that was okay. He said you get a satisfying little pop. So I heard it. I heard it again. I hope that's not me doing something wrong. We'll find out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come at it this direction, this way and down and over and see what happens. Okay, it came off. And then over here. Yeah, I can see, now that I've done this the first time, I can see where, um, where the dome is like adhered to glass. I can see that. Um, the white spot beyond the phosphor has a little bit of chunks of, uh, Yeah, a little bit of chunks of dome on it still. 
Here, let me get a shot of that. So a little bit of chunks of dome around the white area over here, but it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter because, I mean, it's only the phosphor here. The phosphor looks intact, as far as I can tell. I don't see any air gaps. Yeah, this this uh, this dome stuff. Let's see here. It looks. Uh, it feels. Uh, yeah, it's squishy. It's like it's like a um, it's like rubbery or feels like I'm squishing um, hot glue or something. Okay. Well, that one pretty good. Let's do another one. Let's see if I can get better at my technique. Okay, so hope you can see it. Okay, and let's see here. Let's so go straight down. Now, I did not push very hard this time, and I did not feel that crack. I'm just trying to see if that's any different. I got the impression the crack was a good thing. Oh, I felt it that time. I was I was going really lightly too. Oh wow! I get the technique now. He wants you to go at an angle, and then it just kind of like majority of it just pops off. And I almost got it. yeah. And on this part on the on the sides come off too. If I just lift it now. Come on. Let me get it in my tweezers. Oh, let me get the sharp tweezers. Sharp tweezers. Come on. There we go. Okay, now I turn it, get the rest of that dome off. Okay. That wasn't so bad. I mean, I, I guess I guess the reason why you're bothering to do this and not just pull it with tweezers, because so I'm hearing a lot of people are just are just pulling it, like they're just, you know, grabbing the dome and just pulling up, is because you want to push down to prevent that glass from coming up from the phosphor. Okay, um, between the two I just did, I feel like the one. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, I'm looking at it carefully. The one I did first ha is cleaner. The one I went all the way down and it made that crunchy noise. But what's weird is the one I did second where I was being really, really careful with it. That one, the emitter is cracked on the white area. I'm not sure what I did or how I did that. Let me test it right now. Okay, negative. They all still light up. And they are substantially warmer. You can just tell by looking at it. The second one I did where I didn't go down as hard. Well, they all look okay. Let me try and hit it with some ISO on a Q-tip and let's see what that does. Maybe I just need to clean them up. Maybe it's just, you know, garbage from all the stuff I've got on here. All right, let me take a look at it again. Okay, positive, negative. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, that looks better. Yeah, the first one I did still looks better. All right, let me try uh, just following what he was saying. I'm just going to uh, push down so you hear that little crack. Okay, push down again. Okay. I didn't hear any cracks at the time, but I'm, I'm scared to push too hard. And they come in at an angle. Lift it off. 
and then okay let me see what I got on that last one okay I guess I'm starting to figure it out okay uh, the first one I did was the best and I guess what it is is the dome the dome seems to be adhered to the white around the edges and I just went down let it pop a little bit and sweeped it off the dome cracked in a way that the white looks really nice but when I went down gently and then tried to like scrape it off i'm getting like torn bits along the sides here right and it's making the 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 white see 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 what i'm doing on the submitter here i'm like destroying the submitter on purpose because i'm trying to learn this white is coming up now so this white around the edge is is, is um is fragile and so that's why you don't want to mess with that too much okay so I get it now. I, I get what Clements is saying. So the very first one I did when I did it, just his instructions was the best. And the ones that I tried to do something different, it came out worse. So you just kind of go down and you hear a little, a little, a little crack. Then you go down again, come down an angle, scrape off, scrape the other thing off, done. Don't try to pick the edges. Don't try to do any of that because the more I'm doing it, it's just it's getting worse. That first one I did was the best. So that's how I'm going to do it from now on. Now, I'm sure all these emitters still work. It's just, it's just about how pretty they are. Let me turn this back on. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, they all work. They're all fine. But uh, that first one's the prettiest. All right. So there you go. Um, let, me, uh, let me cut the video, throw it back in the light, and we'll measure its delta UV and all and its uh, CCT and everything, see what happened to it. It should have lost a little bit of light. It should be a little bit not as bright. The uh, CCT should go down about 1,000 or 1,200, and then the delta UV should go down. So let's check it out. Okay, so I finished up uh, putting both these lights together. They both have the de-domed 519As in them. Let's see how they fare. I wanted to point out that um, that this uh, RRT01 looks pretty damn good. Um, I do notice when it's off. If you look very carefully, you can see like a little like a scratch mark on the on the glass of the dome. And pretty much all of these had that when I de-domed them, so they don't look like factory fresh. But I mean, look at this. Look, I mean, it looks good. It's it's really nice. So uh, let's take a look at how they fare. First off, let's look at lumens. If you remember, the RRT01 was uh, about 680 lumens, about 700, and it dropped immediately. So uh, this battery here, it's 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 near full. It's uh it's you know uh, about 4.18 or something, so 4.2. Let's take a look. This is a full on, and remember, it's also been been de-domed, so it'll have less lumens than it did when it had the dome on it. This is warmer, and that was you know it peaked about five seventy. That's really good. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, a SW forty five K, so Nietzsche two one nine B, would be it would start at four fifty. And drop and they're cooler the warmer Nietzsche 219 B's like the 3000s or the 3500s they would regularly get 350 400 lumens on an RRT01 with this driver so to hit you know high 600s and then drop this is actually putting out more lumens let's see how it does on the Sekonic so I'll go ahead and uh, blast it here, and oh, it's over. Okay, let's pull it back a little bit. There we go. Well, there you go. So, thirty four hundred K and negative fifty four. So very rosy. You can see that the uh, CRI values were very high. Look at that R nine. 
The R9 is almost as high as the uh, RA, the, uh, the, the sum of all of it. So this is an extremely high output emitter with high CRI. I mean, it's just like, that's why everyone's freaking out about this emitter. Uh, and then, and then to be that warm and rosy, you know, cause it, cause remember this emitter was near neutral before I de-domed it. And then let's take a look at the triple now. And remember the triple was 1050, 1050 on the lumens. Let's see what it is now when I go to turbo. So, and now remember this is, uh, the 4,500, 4,500, uh, Nietzsche 509A that I've de-domed. So let's see what we got. So it almost hit 1500 at the start. Now I got battery sag and it's dropped down to around 1300. That's a market increase. That's almost 50% more than we saw with the uh, 209Bs. So 50% brighter. And let's take a look at how it fares on here. Man, just even to my eye, I can tell how rosy it is. All right, so I was still on the CRI, and you can see it's uh, very high CRI values. Let's go back to here. Oh, look at that. So around 3,400 again, and uh, negative 75, so quite rosy. So this would be just an excellent light at night. Just make you know, flush tones, people look really pretty, nice and warm. And as it's warming up, because remember, as emitters warm up, they get rosier and rosier. And I'm noticing, let's see here, that, uh, yeah, there you go. So now we have negative 86 uh, on the Delta UV. Um, it's pretty hot to the touch because I had it on turbo for a while. So um, that's that's a win. I like this much more than the 219Bs I had in there previously. It was, uh, as I said, 50% more lumens, um, same CRI if not higher, and uh, even a little rosier. So I hope that was instructive to you guys. It looks like the 519A is a win. Unfortunately, if you want it cooler temperature and rosy, you'd have to de-dome a very cool emitter, or just, um, I mean, if you, if you were after SW45K, so if you were after a very rosy 4500 uh, Kelvin emitter, I guess you'd have to start at 5700 and slice from there to get the rosiness, because uh, these are running very neutral when you don't de-dome. All right, guys, see you in the next video. Have a good one.